G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to a bit of an update on the aquaponics and a few things I've planted out around the soil patch. Uh, just quickly before we get into the clip itself, uh, I thought I'd let you know that we will be moving out of this place in roughly around about a week and a half to two weeks time. We are finally renovating, it's taken a while back and forth between builders, designers and banks but we're finally there. So what that means is I won't be doing a lot of soil clip updates, mainly because I'm not planning on growing a lot, just in case we don't have um, full access to the backyard. And also too, a lot of the beds down the back here actually have uh, bits and pieces from under the house on top of them at the moment, because we're sort of running short on room. Um, so yeah, after the house is renovated, we'll get back into the soil patch fully proper, fully proper if that's a uh, word. Um, but we will be running the aquaponics system. The builders assured me we'll have power down here uh, through the process, so thank you very much, John. Um, we are staying local though. We're luckily enough to be renting a house off some um, people that live on the same block as us. They own a rental property around the corner, so we'll actually be able to watch them work on the house uh, from where we'll be renting. So thank you very much, Tina and Michael. We really do appreciate it. So yeah, uh, not a lot will be going on. I will be doing the clips on the aquaponic builds though. I, um, I've got a couple planned already and I've a um, couple of notes written for the script. Basically looking at different types of aquaponic systems. Set out uh, like the last aquaponic clip I did, a uh, bit of a design outline for Pat if you want to check it out, there'll be a link up there. Um, and also different um, components that are used within an aquaponic system. Um, this downtime from uh, the patch will actually mean I'll have time to work on that content because it's a little bit more involved editing wise and also do articles that um, go along with them for the website. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in the aquaponics. Just on other news quickly, for you folks who are interested in roof pouches, I have discounted the larger ones, anything from 39 litres and up. So check out the link down in the description. I'll also put a um, link at the end of the clip over towards our store. Um, so they're discounted. Basically, I don't want to have to move them with me. Um, I'd rather just put the small amount we have left in storage. So get in while you can before they sell out. Also too, we do have the Queensland nut um, or the macadamia nut crackers, hello Lizzie, uh, for sale as well. Um, they aren't discounted unfortunately, but if you are after some, want one for a Christmas present, again, there'll be a link in the description and towards the end of the clip to our store page. That's enough spruiking, but I, you know, I've got to pay the bill somehow. Um, we'll give you a bit of a look at the aquaponic system and then I'll just run through what I planted out. So before we get started, I'll say good day to Lizzie. <laughs> She's desperately wanting me to play ball, so. I'll give you one more toss. There you go. Good girl. There's some of the mess we get to clean out from underneath the house. It's all got to go in storage uh, later on today. But anyway, you missed that one. <laughs> Onto the aquaponics. Uh, just down here, Kira's paved over the top of the rocks with some pavers we had underneath the house. Uh, so they're basically just in storage, but we thought we'd use them in a creative way. Um, also makes it easier on her feet because she goes barefoot a lot when she's um, walking around the system. So these pavers will be removed after the renovation and they'll be going in a little area where we'll be holding workshops on aquaponics and wicking beds and that sort of thing. So, but it's just a nice easy place to store them for now. A little bit of an overview of the system. As you can see, she's very green, uh, considering we've got no fish in there yet um, until after we know what's going on with the electricity supply. So I'm very chuffed with the way she's going. Uh, the mass of this green you can actually see is the Okinawan spinach. Uh, it's, it's basically taken over the bed and it started to flower. And they've got a very, very pretty little flower. Unfortunately, they're, they're a sterile flower. There's no seeds to be um, taken from them. Uh, this stuff grows fantastically from cutting. So what we normally do is we'll take a section like that up to the house, strip off all the lower leaves and only leave a small bunch like that at the top and then pop the stem in some water and they strike very, very well and you can pop them into soil or aquaponics or hydroponics or whatever and they do really, really well in our climate here. They're a plant that I do prefer to eat raw, not cooked and they've got a um, carrot to lettucey sort of um, flavour to them. I gave a couple to some customers that have been over the last few weeks and they've taken them home to strike them in their system. So yeah, uh, one of my favourite greens to eat. Uh, we've got a few other bits and pieces in there. We've got the, the poor old cardamom is um, getting smothered by the Okinawan spinach. We've got a rabbit ear lettuce over there that really does need to come out. Um, a tomato uh, that is basically just struck from a cutting. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, some chard over the back there. We've only taken a few leaves off of that recently. 
Uh, over in this bed here, we have our Brahmi wall. Um, it's doing really well. This is something that we don't really eat a lot of. It's a medicinal plant generally. It's very bitter and we'd probably put, you know, two or three sections like that in a toss salad for the four of us, the family, uh, if Maya comes to visit. So we definitely don't eat this much, but it's really good at making a statement. <laughs> and yeah, it's good at using up all the nutrient that's in the system at the moment. The beetroot are doing really well now that we've sorted out the pH and the nutrient issues. Come around this side to give you a better look. We've got some nice little bulbs down there, but we also do eat the young leaves in salads a lot. Uh, they go really nice in rice paper rolls and that sort of thing. The beetroot down, beetroot, the broccoli over here has got some loose heads on it. This is uh, the stage that I like to pick it. Uh, just loose like this, it goes really well in salads just before the flowers start to open. And indeed the flowers are um, edible as well and very nutritious. So those sections there need to come off. We harvested the ones off this broccoli over here the other day and hopefully we'll get some more florets uh, form on them soon. Um, yeah, the tomato that was growing out of the radial flow filter, I had to pull it out. It just kept blocking the drain between the radial flow filter and the moving bed bioreactor. She had a pretty extensive root system down in there and it ended up being one of those little red cherries. We're fairly sure, so not really a desirable plant. Uh, the other um, bits and pieces, like the one I showed you before just down there, they will be coming out of those grow beds because they do have fairly invasive root systems. Uh, just quickly onto the nutrient side of things. Even though we've got no fish, we've got loads of nitrate in there. And I've also been supplementing the system with a fish emulsion and added in some um, seaweed powder as well, or powdered kelp. And that's basically providing the nutrients for all this growth. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the way it's going, so I think I'm on the right track. The reason the nitrate is so high at the moment is I was pretty crook um, uh, last week and a couple of weeks back uh, with a bit of a chest infection, and I didn't realize that I'd overdosed the system with urea, so the nitrate is very high at the moment. Um, but yeah, with the amount of plant growth going on, I'd say it will be uh, falling fairly soon. So if all goes well and we can get back into the house before February next year, I might have enough time to um, rework a lot of this pipe work and the tanks and the filters so we can get some jade perch back in here. Uh, there's also a few things I'd like to do with these grow beds. They all need a bit of a clean out because there would be a load of solids in there. So um, yeah, it needs a real major rework, I think, before I pop some more fish in there. Now on to the soil bits. Uh, this large root pouch garden was growing a um, load of honeypod peas along the back. I had two broccoli in there to begin with. We've pulled one out. Um, we've only got one left here with a couple of little florets. It'll be ready to harvest in the next day or so. And we also have some uh, cress, upland cress down the bottom there. That's a um, dead end crop. Uh, white cabbage butterflies lay their eggs on there. The caterpillars eat it and may die off, so um, that's in there. Hopefully, well, fingers crossed, protecting the broccoli. I haven't seen much bug or caterpillar action on a lot of plants recently, so hopefully there's not a lot around. I fed up the bed the other day and planted out, I think it was five bits of ginger rhizome in here. So this will be another ginger bed again. I've already started working on a um, from planting to harvest clip on last year's crop that came from this garden bed. Unfortunately, my last um, video editing software crashed and I lost all the editing I'd done up to a point. So I've had to start again from scratch with the new system. Hopefully, uh, while we're out of the house, I'll be able to finish off that edit and show you that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty um, confident that we're going to get another great crop of ginger out of here. Um, just to let you in on a little bit of a secret, I've um, planted some mothers from last year's ginger around the front there already. So I always get asked how well mothers grow. Um, they're the original pieces of ginger you plant out and then harvest the fresh root from. So I've popped some in there as a bit of an experiment this season just to see how they all go. And I'm sure you'll see that in the upcoming months. This is down in there eating fallen mulberries, I think. Um, just quickly, the mulberries in there, we do have a load that we need to harvest. Don't know how well you can see through that cloth there, but there are a load of black ones on there. And, oh, there's one down there on a leaf. It looked like it fell off overnight, so they need to be harvested. And we've been taking a couple of very nice bowls of the blueberries off the bushes as well. Unfortunately, the same birds that found out that the mulberries were tasty have also discovered our blueberries. So we're having to come through and harvest them fairly often now. And as a result, we're getting a few that aren't quite ripe. We've got, got a little bit of a tart kick to them, but that's all right. Uh, just down over here in this large root pouch, 
I decided to plant out another batch of the ginger. So what I did was um, feed up the bed using some soil from old root pouches we were no longer using, some compost and a couple of pellets as well, slow release organic pellets, and separated some of the Chinese red shallots back through the bed. Now I did have some warrigal greens growing in there, so no doubt we'll end up with um, red shallots, warrigal greens, and the ginger growing in this bed. So that's why I went a bit heavy on the compost feed. Um, hopefully they'll all do really well and we'll get a great crop of everything out of there. Uh, some of the other red shallots I just popped into a pouch down here as a big clump. We like to eat them as just a shallot green or a green onion green. So yeah, pretty happy with the way that they've gone. And down here, the mint. Uh, this has been very tasty in the gin. As you can see, we're getting a few holes in it again. Uh, things are warming up, so we're getting a load of grasshoppers back in the patch. Don't know if you can make it out, but there's a very small little common grasshopper down in there. So these guys normally look really good at the start of the uh, warmer season through spring and then as soon as summer hits, even though they've got enough water and nutrition in the soil, the grasshoppers just absolutely thrash them here. Well, I do know other folks um, like Marco on the north side from Self Sufficient Me, his mint always looks awesome. Um, but yeah, for some reason, uh, the grasshoppers really hit ours through summer. Uh, just a few more blueberries in there and the other pouches are over the back there and some very pretty um, society garlic flowers. So as you can see, I've still got a lot to do here. Uh, it's just gonna be hard trying to work in amongst the builders and whatnot. That's why we've pretty much all decided to um, can all the other plans until after the renovations are done. Uh, hopefully though, I might be able to make a little bit of a head start on the redesign of the aquaponics system. Just a quick reminder, if you are after a bit of a discount on the root pouches, the link is in the description and one will pop up at the end here. Uh, we also sell, uh, as well as the root pouches, uh, the uni seals for aquaponics, venturis, and also the Queensland nut buster as well. So you can check them out if you're in the market for some aquaponic gear or a macadamia nutcracker. A quick thank you as well to you marvelous folks over on Patreon who are sticking by us, even though content is a little bit um, thin on the ground at the moment, as you can understand with being so busy. Um, thank you very much for continuing your support. I totally understand it. If uh, you decide to have a break for a while, well, not a lot's coming out, but hopefully I'll keep those aquaponic clips coming. As always, you can find the links to the Super Contributors websites and Facebook groups down in the description below. It'd be fantastic if you could show them some love and say good day from me if you do end up uh, visiting their sites and pages. I will leave it there though. I do hope you've all enjoyed the clip and I will catch you next time. Cheers all, have a top one.